welcome to Assembly Update. I'm uh, Tom Abenanti. I represent the 92nd Assembly District, which is the town of Greenberg, the town of Mount Pleasant, and a little bit of the city of Yonkers. Uh, periodically, we have a, a little bit of a discussion about what's going on up here in Albany. Uh, I try to give you a, an update as to what we're doing uh, and how it affects uh, people down in Westchester. Uh, I had the opportunity to uh, uh, meet a gentleman uh, named David Miller a little earlier right. today. Um, I'm constantly telling people back in Westchester that this is not a dysfunctional government. It is valid disagreements among people who come from very different backgrounds, very different parts of the state, very different lifestyles, who are trying to resolve their differences. And sometimes you don't do that in a very brief conversation. Uh, and David is a good example of somebody who lives a lifestyle very different than the lifestyle that we're accustomed to in Westchester County. David is from Prattsburg, not Plattsburgh, which many of us have heard of, but Prattsburg. Uh, and David is with the New York State Trappers Association, something that we would figure we'd never have any interest in in Westchester County, except that all of a sudden we have an explosion of deer, we have an explosion of coyote, and we have people with on both sides of the issue of how do you deal with them. Good people who care about their community, care about animals, and are saying, we should do this, no, we should do this, we shouldn't do anything. So all of a sudden, the types of things that you do are becoming a discussion point in Westchester County. But first of all, David, welcome. Thank you. Um, where's Prattsburg? Prattsburg is in the southwestern part of the Finger Lakes. Um, very close to Cuca Lake uh, in the area where there are lots of grapevines and wineries and, uh, and what's the population? All kinds of beautiful country. Um, about 1,700, 16 or 1,700. 1,700 Small people. Small place. And how big people. is it? How many miles it's, would you it's say? A, well, the town itself is fairly big, but um, the, the business section of the town is, you know, a, a guy with a good arm could probably throw a baseball from one end to the other. <laughs> it sounds like some of our villages, <laughs> uh, but on the other hand, the town of Greenberg has uh, 95,000 people in it, and uh, it sounds like you have the population of one New York City apartment building spread out over a town. I, uh, I visited New York City a few years ago and had an opportunity to speak at the uh, uh, Fashion Institute of Technology. and. And one of the first questions that some of those young folks asked was where I came from and how big it was. And I said, or, I walked past more people here between the train station and, and here than live in my town. <laughs> okay. Um, have you <coughs> lived there your whole life? Are you from that area? No. I, I lived, um, grew up in an area uh, west of Rochester, New York, uh, that when I was growing up there was all dairy farms. Uh, is now a suburb, uh, and over my life I have kept moving away <laughs> from the suburbs more and more, and, and I've been in Prattsburg for about 25 years. Now, you're a trapper. I am. What is that? What do you do? <clears throat> well, you know, trappers, um, trappers are an interesting group of people. We, um, you know, basically we, we uh, harvest uh, for animals, for their pelts. Um, those pelts are sold uh, on a market that is, uh, you know, a, a big worldwide market, an international market. Uh, they bring a good deal of income into some families, much needed income in some areas. Some areas of the state, as you know, are, are uh, not particularly affluent. and. Uh, a few hundred dollars or a couple of thousand dollars or whatever is is a big help. So you're part of basically a big industry. Right? A huge industry, yes, actually. You're the beginning uh, of that industry. We are, we are the farmers, I guess you would say. We're the, we're the guys who uh, grow the pumpkins and they go from there. What do you <coughs> do with the, with the pelts once, you, once you've trapped the animal? So we trap the animal. Um, the animal, of course, has to be often are held uh, live in the traps, restrained. Uh, so the animal has to be humanely killed. And then they're skinned. And those skins are cleaned up, 
put on a form usually so that they dry in some reasonable shape and are then go through a, a, sometimes a whole series of people who buy them. They, they sometimes start out at what we call country fur buyers who are just local guys who buy some fur. They collect it and it goes on to the next place and, and eventually, but eventually most fur winds up um, in one of the large Canadian auctions. Um, well, do we have any place in New York that, uh, that deals with fur and, 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 and manufactures garments from it? There is still some manufacturing in New York City. At one time, New York City was the hub of the world fur industry. Uh, it employed thousands and thousands of people. Um, it was, you know, they, they were, they made a very good income. Uh, they were really specialists in what they did. Uh, you know, preparing, preparing a raw skin to be made into a garment uh, is an art. Uh, mm. Sometimes, you know, whole skins are, are sewed together to make a coat, but m many times uh, those skins are, are what they call stripped. They cut little slices out of them piece those slices together so it looks like everything is is uh, the same and, and the color is the same and the shape is the same and everything is it works together to make I, I think there's garment. an image that uh, we're depleting the natural resources <coughs> that we have in New York by doing things like trapping is there a, is there a what's the population of the animals like actually the population of, of almost all wildlife in New York is is growing and expanding particularly fur bearers. In New York, we have, I think, 13 animals that are considered fur bearers. And that's, that includes beaver, uh, river otter, muskrats, gray and red foxes, coyotes, uh, fisher and marten, which live in some parts of New York where the habitat is what they need, uh, skunks and possums and weasels. And, and uh, we, have, you know, we have many fur bearers. All of those populations are expanding and growing. Probably the, you know, probably the ones that, that really show that the most are the fisher and the pine marten, uh, which have traditionally been uh, deep woods animals, Adirondack, deep into the Catskills. And, and those populations now are actually showing up in the suburbs and, and uh, and wreaking havoc. And, and indeed and wreaking, wreaking havoc. havoc. It's, uh, it, 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 it is disconcerting to a lot of people uh, to find that we have uh, an overpopulation of deer, which is not what you deal with, uh, but it's, it's created uh, some, some tensions in our communities uh, because uh, there are people who would like to preserve the deer and, and try to handle them gently, and there are others who are very concerned about uh, the impacts on the suburban way of life and even more, the, the safety hazards, because more and more we're hearing of accidents between deer and, uh, and, and automobiles. I mean, I was just speaking with uh, my, my colleague from Mount Vernon, who was saying that uh, they're now finding deer on the streets of Mount Vernon. And Mount Vernon is a very, very populated urban center. Um, you know, uh, those of us who live in Greenberg or Mount Pleasant, a little bit further, you know, mid Westchester County, we have a lot of open space, we have a lot of parkland, and so you can understand having, having a lot of deer. Uh, but um, Mount Vernon is, is quite far south, and you're almost into the Bronx at that point. Um, but the other population that we're having a lot of, uh, we're, we're getting, having problems with now is coyote. And um, there was just, uh, you and I were discussing before the show about, um, about uh, some incidents down in, uh, in Westchester County where kids have been attacked, uh, where there have been losses of dogs and, and cats. Um, and so it's become a real problem in, in Westchester. Do you, you take coyote also? We do take coyotes. And coyotes do become a problem very, very quickly in heavily populated areas because they very quickly become accustomed to being around people and to um, use the, the food sources that people supply. And they become very, very bold, especially in areas like Westchester County. Um, some of the more heavily populated counties, uh, where they really, there's really not much opportunity for the individual to deal with them. Um, you know, where I live, out in the country, um, 
if a coyote gets too bold, he gets shot. If he's if it, if a coyote gets around the barns or around the houses or around the children or the livestock or something, he doesn't last very long. But in Westchester County and in, in areas like that where people can't take care of those things by themselves, they very quickly become very, very bold and very aggressive. Well, uh, what do we do? What can we learn from you about how to deal with the coyote problem? Well, the best way to deal with coyotes, and this, this comes not only from me, but comes from, from some of the wildlife people here in our DEC, and, and you know, we're very fortunate in this state to have um, just some of the finest wildlife managers that you're, you'll find anywhere. And these folks tell me that the only way to deal with coyotes is by trapping. Hunting, when you, the more you hunt coyotes, they tell me, the smarter they get and the, and the more difficult they get to hunt. Um, now people, th th especially from where, where I live, they talk, you know, <coughs> they think of traps as, as being some, this, this huge bear trap that, that some kid is gonna fall into or something like that. Yeah, and that's understood. And that's, I think that's the image that, you know, so many people have, uh, uh, some, big, cruel piece of equipment with teeth and all kinds of things, but traps with teeth have been outlawed in New York for probably close to 100 years, maybe more than that. Um, the largest trap that can be set on land, the largest foothold trap, uh, is only five and three quarters inches. Well, what about a kid? Across. Can a kid step into that and get hurt? Uh, a, a kid, it would be almost impossible for a youngster to step in those. Um, and even if they did, uh, you know, the, I've, I've had my fingers in them many times. Every trapper um, catches himself occasionally. And, and I, you and, have all 10 and fingers. I, and I have all 10 fingers, and they all work pretty good. And, and uh, they're just, you know, the, the foothold trap is not what the public image sees. The, the foothold trap has been improved over the years, I mean, yearly, yearly, manufacturers come up with new things to make them uh, as humane as they can possibly be, as safe as they can possibly be. Um, so the now you were telling me about another type of trap. <clears throat> I was. And we've got just about a, a minute or two left, so what is, the, what is this other trap you're talking about? Well, this about? other trap is, is a loop, and uh, we call them cable restraints. They're a loop that the animal tries to pass through. They are illegal in New York at this point and have been illegal here for many, many years. Well, doesn't it choke the animal? No. Um, that's why we call them cable restraints now. And, you know, people think of that as a snare. We don't, we don't think about snares anymore. Cable restraints are, are made in such a way that they don't close all the way. And the locking device on them, which is the part that slides and lets them shut, is made in such a way that when the animal pulls on them, it tightens a bit, and when the animal relaxes, they loosen. And the so animal, animals are pretty smart. They very quickly learn that the more they pull, the more trouble they're in. So it doesn't kill the animal, it just, just traps the animal. It just holds them. So if a dog or a cat were to get in if there? If a dog or cat were to get in there, um, there wouldn't be any problem. You know, almost all dogs, especially in those heavily populated areas, are used to being on a leash. And what we find is that when an animal gets on, gets in one of these, they think they're on a leash and they just stop and sit down. Very wait, interesting conversation. Wait for the trapper. Very interesting conversation. Well, I, I appreciate you. David Miller, you're coming to, to uh, enlighten me a little bit about the lifestyle up uh, in Prattsburg, New York. And I appreciate all of you uh, who are watching uh, at home, uh, learning a little bit about the, the variety of people uh, who are represented in the New York State Legislature. Uh, look forward to uh, speaking with you again and uh, you. bringing to uh, those of you uh, in Westchester a little more understanding of what we're doing here in Westchester County.